How to create a stylized fire in Blender. Start by adding a shape. This works with any shape, but I did it with a sphere. Begin by shaping the sphere into a flame with proportional editing turned on as such. This is optional, but I deleted the top faces to keep the mesh open. Begin by adding a new material. Change the render engine to Eevee and enable the ambient inclusion, bloom, and screen space reflection boxes. Bring up a new viewport and open up the shader editor in it. Delete the default node and add an emission node. We'll begin with adding flames. Add a Voronoi node. Connect the color ramp node to its distance socket. Add a texture coordinate and mapping nodes with Ctrl T. Then add a mix shader node and connect it between the emission shader and shader output nodes. Now add a transparent node and connect it to the bottom socket of the mix shader node. And connect the color ramp node to the factor socket of the mix shader node. Chef let's click on the node to isolate its view and see what it does on its own. Now change the color ramp node's interpolation type to constant. This is important for the stylized look and revert its black and white values in the end, the white part will end up transparent, the black part will be your flames. Then connect the mix shader back to the material output. To enable transparency, click on the options tab. To see it, you must be in Eevee. And change the transparency blending mode to alpha blend. Change the texture coordinate node from generated to object. The texture will start from the origin point. Now it's time to color our fire, but first begin by adding a gradient node, connect it to a color ramp node, and with shift plus T, add a texture coordinate and mapping nodes. Rotate the gradient texture to 90 degrees on the y-axis for it to be vertical. Add colors on the color ramp node, set the extremities with dark red on top and bright orange at the bottom. Add the in-between colors with bright red and orange in between. Change the color ramp node's blending mode to beast blend for the smoothest blending results. Adjust the position of the gradient by adjusting the X location on the mapping node. To avoid a full transparency, I modified the white value on the color ramp node by turning it into a very light gray value. Before continuing shading the fire, I want to create a procedural animation on the mesh for it to move like fire. I begin by adding a subdivision modifier, this way I increase the mesh's resolution for a smoother animation. Then add a displace modifier, it'll be the basis of the animation. Add a new texture, name it fire, and open up the texture by clicking here. And set the texture type to Voronoi. Then, back on the modifier, lower the strength a little, the mesh will soon begin to take shape. Make sure to shade smooth the mesh for a better view. Go back to the Displace Modifier's texture settings to increase its size. Then scroll down and enable the Color Wrap option and adjust the slider to your liking. For the animation, we begin to change the Displace Modifier's coordinates to Object. Then add an empty, any empty, and one with the single arrow one. Right click it and adjust its display size so it's easier to view. Then go to its object properties and enable In Front so you can see it on the top of any object in your viewport. Give it a name like emp displace then select it under Object in the Displace modifier. And as you can see, the displaced texture follows the movement of the empty. As I move the empty up the Z-axis, so will the texture creating a procedural animation. To make the arrow empty move on its own, I'll type the command hashtag frame forward slash 24 on its Z-axis under the Item tab. And as soon as I press play, it'll move on its own. To have the shaded flames move along with the displaced animation, I need to go back to the shader editor. I'll select the arrow empty under object in the texture coordinate node. Make sure to have the object node connected for this to work. Make sure to adjust the flames with the color ramp node. Pro tip, to have a better view of the bloom, darken the viewport's background color. To do this, change the shader editor's view from object to world and adjust the background's color in the editor. Now it's time to add another layer of transparency on the fire. Begin by adding another mix shader node and add another transparent node by duplicating the first one we already have and connect it to the bottom socket. But before we move forward, I want to organize my nodes a little as it's getting packed. For example, I'll select the Voronoi node group that makes the flames and I'll press Ctrl plus J to join them into one frame. Then click on the node tab on the sidebar and name it in the label field and color code it by enabling color and choosing whichever color you prefer. Select all of the nodes that make the color and do the same. Control plus J to join them, name the label, and color code it. Now back to the second layer of transparency, add a gradient texture, Control plus T to add a texture coordinate and mapping node, and connect the gradient node to a new color ramp node. And now to set up the gradient's transparent levels, shift plus click on the color ramp node, and in the mapping node rotate Y to 90 degrees to have it vertical. Connect the color ramp node to the mix shader and then the mix shader to the material output. Adjust the transparency levels with the color ramp. Don't forget that white equals transparent and black equals opaque. In the end, what we want is to cover the tipping point of the fire on top, just like that. Now it's time to add details. Starting with the embers coming out of the fire, we'll begin by duplicating the fire mesh and scaling it up to look bigger than the fire and then positioning it accordingly. Then we'll jump into the shader editor to create the embers. First off, we need to duplicate a copy of the shader as we work on the embers. We don't want to mess up the fire shader. 
Next, add a third slider to the color ramp node that was added as a second layer of transparency, the one connected to the gradient node. Then adjust the slider so that you're sandwiching a black slider between two white sliders, keeping the blending mode to ease. Then create the embers by scaling up the Voronoi texture and adjusting its color ramp node to increasing transparency. This way you create tiny sparks that'll act as embers. Also remember earlier when we made the white sliders value light gray not to have full transparency on the fire? Well now we want full transparency on the embers, so change the light gray slider back to a pure white. I want the embers to move slower than the flames, so I'll create a new empty for the embers that will drive their animation separately. Name the empty, I named it EMP-embers. Now select the empty under object in the texture coordinate node, move the empty and test it to make sure it works. In the embers empty z axis location field type hashtag frame forward slash 48. I don't want the embers to have the exact same color as the fire, so disconnect the gradients color ramps node from the emission node, and copy the dark red color from the color ramp node and paste it into the emission node's color option. Now we'll create the smoke, add a cube to the scene and in edit mode delete the top and bottom faces. Give it a subdivision modifier to smooth it out and then apply the modifier, and in edit mode scale it up and then move it accordingly as such. Then add a new subdivision modifier followed by a displace modifier, add a cloud type texture and then increase its size. Go back to the subdivision modifier and increase the levels to have more details. Then add another subdivision modifier placed after the displace modifier to smooth out the deformations. To animate the smoke mesh, add a new empty. Change the displace modifier's coordinates to object and select the new empty for the smoke. Then animate its z-axis channel by typing hashtag frame forward slash 48. Create a new material for the smoke, delete the principled BSDF shader and add an emission shader followed by a transparent node. Add a mix shader node and plug them in as per usual, emission on top, transparent at the bottom. Set the smoke color in the emission shader, I went for a dark red color. Next up, to design the smoke, add a noise texture, Control plus T to add the texture coordinate and mapping nodes and connect the noise texture to a color ramp node. Shift plus click on the color ramp node to isolate the view, connect the object option for the texture coordinate node and start scaling up the texture to get a smoke trail effect. Reconnect the mix shader node in the output and change the blend mode to alpha blend. This way you can adjust the smoke effect in real time with transparency on. Also adjust the smoke mesh shape in edit mode to make sure the shape isn't too uniform even with the displace modifier turned on. And like before, we want to add a second layer of transparency, add a gradient node, control plus D for the texture coordinate and mapping nodes, and connect it to a color ramp node. Chef plus click to isolate the color ramp node and rotate its Y axis by 90 degrees to make the gradient vertical. And adjust the white slider to determine your transparency level. In the end, I decided to change the smoke's noise blending to constant, it looks more stylized that way. And change the noises color ramp node's black value to mid gray so the smoke trails have more transparency. Finally, I want to show you how I created the black outlines. Start by adding a solidify modifier to your mesh, then scroll down to the normal section and enable flip. Then go to the materials tab and add a new material and make it a black emission shader only. I named mine outline. Also, make sure that back face cooling is enabled or else the effect won't work. Now go back to your solidify modifier and scroll down to the materials section. Under offset, change the value to 1 because the black emission shader is the second material on the list. The count starts at 0, so 1 follows second. Then adjust the thickness slider depending on how thick you want the outline to be. And that is how you create a stylized fire in Blender. If you have any further questions, leave a comment down below and I'll get to it as fast as I can. Peace!